Welcome to the Getting Started series of Test Architect videos. Over the next six sessions, you'll be guided through the steps required to develop, execute, and review the results of a complete automated test of an application. In the process, you'll be shown some of the ways Test Architect allows you and your organization to create robust, highly scalable, and maintainable automated tests. We'll begin this series with the creation of a Test Architect project. A project holds all the test assets you create for a given application, suite of applications, or whatever you choose to define as a project. In the process, we'll also create a Test Architect repository, which is where your projects as well as administrative components live. In the subsequent video, we'll create a test module, which acts as the container for a set of related test cases, and we'll discuss the test module template, which assists you in organizing your test module in the prescribed manner. Mapping user interface elements aids in both maintainability and readability of your tests, as you'll see when we explore that topic. Once the UI elements are mapped, we'll go ahead and write a simple test for a sample application provided with Test Architect. We'll then execute the automated test and review the results that Test Architect reports. Finally, we'll discuss how you can create user-defined actions, an essential element of Test Architect's action-based testing philosophy. Launch Test Architect now by double-clicking the client icon on your desktop. Let's create a new repository. In the tree, double-click the Test Architect node or right-click it and select New Repository Connection. A repository you connect to can reside on any host that is running Test Architect Repository Server. You have an instance of Repository Server running on your own machine, which is hosting your sample repository. Now in a serious multi-user environment, you'll probably want your repositories hosted by a dedicated server. But for now, let's just create a new repository on our own machine. First, just in case your client is already aware of any other servers on the network, make sure that the server field does indeed display localhost. Click New, give your repository a name, and click OK. Now Test Architect is creating a bare-bones repository for us with some very basic components common to all repositories. Back in the Connection dialog, we find the new repository listed along with Sample Repository. Click OK and we now have a connection to our repository. Now, although we now see our repository in the Explorer tree, to actually gain access to anything in it, we need to log in, which we can do by double-clicking. All new repositories start off with a single user, administrator, who requires no password. Now, in the real world, at least the multi-user one, one of the first things you'll want to do is create a strong password for administrator and perhaps add some users. You'll find information on users, groups, and permissions in Test Architect Help. Click OK to log in. And now we have access to the contents of the repository, which at this point consists primarily of administrative components. Now, should you wish to log out of the repository, you can do that from the context menu, which also offers an alternative way to log in and allows you to log in as a different user. So, as just seen, getting access to a new repository is a three step process create the repository, either on your local machine or a remote server, establish a connection between the repository and your client session and log into the repository. Next step is to create a project. Right-click the repository node and select New Project. Now, for this project, we're going to be testing a sample application called Car Rental, a reservation system for a fictitious car rental company. So let's call this project My Car Rental. We're also required to create a key, which should be a somewhat short but unique ID for the project. Let's use CR. The description field is optional, but always a good idea to take advantage of. Now click Create. And now a new node for our project has appeared in the tree, along with a set of nodes that will hold our test assets, better known as Project Items. That's it for this first session. If you've been following along, you'll by now have created a Test Architect repository and then provided it with its first project. In the next session, you'll begin populating your project with Project Items as we create a test module. And we'll look at the test module template used to reinforce a solid, readable structure for your test module and its contents. 